All right, so today I want to talk about 10 things that I wish I knew before I started breeding mice. I've been breeding mice for about five years as a food source for my ball python hatchlings. And let me tell you, when I first started breeding ball pythons, I did not realize I was going to end up breeding mice. That's kind of crazy. And the reason I breed mice is my very first year in ball pythons, at the beginning of the season, I hatched out about 40 ball pythons and I put them up in my hatchling rack. And I tried everything to get those ball pythons to eat. I was trying frozen thawed rats. I was even trying the live rat pups because at the time I was breeding my own rats and let me tell you I could not get any of them to eat. I think out of those 40 hatchlings I had maybe three of them that ate their first meal after about two weeks. I was getting a little panicked after two weeks. You know how skinny hatchlings are and they just kind of get skinnier and skinnier. So in desperation I actually went to a local reptile store and I was like what can I feed these hatchlings and he recommended live mouse hoppers and he actually had some live mice in the back of his store and I bought 40 live mouse hoppers and when I fed them that day, I think all of them except one of them ate all the live mouse hoppers. And at that point I was like, all right, I need to start breeding my own mice, especially because they were really expensive at the pet store. I think I was paying like $2 a piece. It cost me like $80 for one feeding for my bull pythons. I was like, that's not really financially stable for a breeding operation. So at that point I actually started breeding my own mice. And let me tell you, over the last five years, I learned quite a bit along the way. So what I want to do is I want to show you my mouse breeding setup and cover the 10 things that I wish I knew when I started breeding mice. All right, so here is one of my rodent racks down here in my basement. I have two racks down here. One of them, I mainly breed my rats. And on this one, just the top two levels are my mice. And on the bottom here, this is actually a stackable rack. On the bottom, these are rat breeder tubs that are currently empty right now. I'm pretty much downsizing everything right now because I'm going into the ball python breeding season where most of my females and some of my males will go on a really long fast, so I don't really need that many rodents. And let me tell you, this rack is pretty awesome. The way this is set up, I actually have a five gallon bucket up on top here. You can see the water level, so you can see exactly where the water is in the bucket. And then the bucket feeds all these lines and all the lines come down here to the tubs and the, the, it has a little water nozzle that's pressure activated where the mice can kind of hit the little end of the water nozzle and get a drink of water. And right now, this is what I have, just white mice right in here. And take a look at this one. This one's kind of crazy. This one is has a lot of mice in it. This one is really packed. So what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm removing all my males and just keeping all my females and letting my females pretty much have all the offspring. And look at all those. You have to watch out when you have a lot of little, those are hopper size right there. And the little hoppers, they can jump out if you're, if you're not too careful. So I made a list of 10 things that I wish I knew before I started breeding mice. And I want to go down the list from one to 10. So the first one is only the male mice smell bad. So if you're worried about mice smelling really bad, uh, let me tell you, the male mice smell worse than anything else. And you definitely want to keep the males one per tub because if, if the males start fighting with each other, they smell even worse. It gets really super stinky. As a matter of fact, when I first went to the pet store, I bought some mice and they smelled so bad I had to take them out of the cab of my truck and put them in the back of my truck <laughs> because they smelled so bad. It's because it was, it was, I had a whole bunch of males and the males were fighting. Let me tell you, fighting males smell really bad. So what I do is I keep the number of males to a minimum and just pretty much keep one male per tub. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just have females in some and then kind of move the males through. So if you want to really cut down the smell, you definitely want to reduce the number of males. All right, so number two, uh, first time moms will cannibalize their young. So that is one of the things that kind of freaked me out when I first started. So some of these uh, have one in here that is a new time mom, just has some brand new babies. And you'll see on a lot of, a lot of mice that have the very first young, 
uh, some brand new, you can actually see on this one. So a lot of times, the very first time moms, when they have little tiny babies like that, little tiny pink babies, a lot of times you'll find that they cannibalize them, they'll actually eat them. And when I first started breeding mice and I saw that, I thought, you know, there's something wrong with that female. <laughs> I'm just gonna call that female, feed it off to one of my snakes and try another female. And the problem is, is most of the times, the first litter or two litters, they'll actually cannibalize their young. And then the third or fourth, they'll figure it out and they won't ever do it again. It's always just the first one or two litters, usually the very first one that you'll have a problem on, but pretty much after that, they, you, they won't cannibalize the litter. So if you have a problem with your mice eating the babies, I would definitely give them another chance or a couple more chances before culling those mice and starting with another mouse. It's, it's pretty common with mice. And the weird thing is you won't see that with rats. All right, so number, number three, they require frequent replacement of bedding. <laughs> I tell you, that's, it's, they really smell a lot faster than a lot of your rats. So the rats, you can go a little bit longer. I'd say maybe five days on the rats. But when it comes to mice, the mice, you really have to stay up on top of the bedding. And what I use is I actually use this, uh, it's like a, a pine bedding. I've tried a whole bunch of different beddings. I pretty much go to pine. If you really want to cut the smells down, you definitely want to replace it probably, I'd say, every three days, maybe four days maximum, but you definitely don't want to go a whole week with mice. All right, so let's look at number four on my list here. Uh, you have less fighting in tubs versus enclosures. So this is kind of interesting. When I first started breeding rats, I started breeding them in aquariums. And my aquariums, when I first started, I'd say they were probably about as big as a tub like this. So it's kind of like a 10 gallon aquarium that I packed with newspaper and it was almost like a 3D enclosure in the kind of the, the mouse setup that I had where they could burrow through. And the problem is, is they'd kind of separate into corners and they were really aggressive towards each other. And there's a lot of fighting in that 10 gallon aquarium. And for some reason, when you actually put them in an open spot like this where they can see each other all the time, where there's nothing they can hide in, it seems like there's zero fighting compared to what you'd see in where you actually have a lot of decorations and a lot of place to hide, which which I thought was kind of interesting. It's like in these rack systems, there's pretty much zero fighting with the mice. All right, number five, they don't do well on shredded newspaper. For a while, I was going through a whole bunch of different substrates before I ended up with this pine bedding. And I tried, uh, when I, as a matter of fact, when I first started, I tried uh, shredded, It was I, we had shredded paper from our office that we would shred and we'd put in, uh, kind of just in the trash. And I was taking it and reusing it here. And then when I quit my day job, I started shredding a whole bunch of different things and uh, one point I went to buying reams of paper and I was just shredding office paper and then I tried a whole bunch of different substrates. Some of them were toxic and I was having problems with some of the toxicity and one of the things I tried was shredded newspaper because it's free and it was really easy just to run through my shredder and for some reason when I used the shredded newspaper they got really sickly looking. I had young mice like this. You can tell these are these are kind of young mice, not really that old. And when I used the shredded newspaper, they looked like they were really super old. They got really shaggy and really sickly looking. I don't know what was wrong with that newspaper, but when I switched back to just regular like office paper, shredded office paper, they they instantly recovered within just a couple days, which was kind of crazy. So I don't want to pinch this guy. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the next one. Number six, uh, it's hard to feed off colorful mice. That's the other thing. So when I first started, actually, you actually look at all these, and all these are white mice. I went to pretty much 100% white mice after uh, my first bout with mice. So when I got my very first my mice to breed for my snakes, I went to, I think it was Petco or PetSmart or something like that, and I bought the fancy mice there. I think I bought just a couple random colored mice. I started breeding them together, and come to find out when you're breeding those mice, they produce a whole rainbow of colors of mice. And I had ones that were gold, like a metallic sheen, a gold mice, and I actually had some 
some that were all white with black spikes like Dalmatian mice. And I started holding back all these really fancy, really awesome mice. And pretty soon, <clears throat> my whole rack here was completely full of all these mice that I didn't want to feed to my snakes. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm breeding mice, but I have all these that are just pets. And it was kind of like a moral dilemma. It's like, you don't want to feed off these really fancy mice. And then I went to, I pretty much got rid of all those, and I went to a white mouse where all the mice look exactly the same. There's no, you're not worried about, you know, one looking better than the other. They're all pretty much equal from one mouse to the other. So that's another thing you want to think about. The other thing too is the colored mice don't produce as well as these mice. They don't have as many babies. All right, so number seven, productive strains can have 16 babies at a time, which is insane. So when I first started in mice, I bought those really colorful ones. And those really colorful ones, I think I was producing maybe five or six offspring at a time. So you actually look at these, and the older they get, the less they produce. But this one actually has one, two, three, four, seven in here. So these, you can definitely tell these guys are getting a little bit older. And the older they get, the fewer mice they produce. But once they get to, you know, you, you have some mice in the prime. And that's what you see over here. Take a look at these. This is, this is just insane over here. And you'll get like 16 babies per litter and look at all those mice it's just really crazy how many mice they produce and then if you actually put two females in here and they both have babies at the same time it completely fills the tub and it can be overwhelming and then those babies believe it or not they'll mature within a month and be ready to breed so they can let me tell you they can explode on you exponentially as far as your mouse population it can kind of it kind of surprise you how fast they populate through the whole thing and that's one thing I didn't expect. All right, so number eight is they don't live very long. So mice, believe it or not, mice only live about a year. After about eight months, they are pretty much too old to breed, which is kind of crazy. And in some cases, you can take a mouse and you can uh, you can you know just keep it alive for like two years. Some, sometimes some people say that a mouse can live up to two years, but I'd say it's it's, it's really really super old at two years. I'd say pretty much at a year and a half they get to the point where they start falling apart and they will start looking like a really old mouse a lot of times what they'll do is they'll get really super fat and kind of scraggly you can definitely tell the old mice versus the new mice so you can definitely tell in their eyes like this one has really kind of fresh looking eyes they start looking older in the eyes the older they get and they you can definitely tell the older ones but they don't live very long that's another thing as far as trying to rotate and organize your whole breeding operation too all right so number nine the males will fight to the death which is terrible. You definitely don't want more than one male per tub. And usually what happens is you'll start out with a whole bunch of mice like this, and then they, they grow super fast. So in about another week or two, these will start maturing, and then all the males will start fighting with each other. And it's like this little whirlwind of aggression. It looks like a little tornado. Two males just going at it, just spinning around and around in circles. And I've seen, when I first bought these mice, they, they were throwing them all in this really big, Big tub with all the you know the males and the females and everything all together and the half of them were just really bloody and all torn up let me tell you if you just randomly throw mice together especially if you have a lot of adult males together they will rip each other apart that's one thing you have to watch out for and then when they start ripping each other apart especially the males they'll really start stinking really bad so normally what I do is I listen to my mice <laughs> that's kind of a weird way to do it but if I can hear mice fighting then I know I have some babies that are mature enough to where I need to remove some of those males. All right, so I think this is the last one on my list. Number 10, the hoppers will cannibalize the newborns. So if you take a look at some of these over here, I think I had some up here. So take a look at these. These are some pretty big hoppers up here. These are the size that you really have to be careful of. This, this like this one right in here, because they get to the point where they're they're not really that big, but they're they're not fully adults. But now if some of these females start having babies, the these small 
smaller, uh, smaller mice, I'd say probably, well, it really depends on the size. I'd say probably like, you know, this size, right? This size right here, you have to really be careful of because they will eat the newborn babies. So a lot of times it's, it's kind of tricky because sometimes you'll have some that aren't quite weaned yet. Like this one is too young to be completely removed from the female. That's another thing. You don't want to remove them too quick. And then if you leave them in there while the female has more babies, then a lot of times uh, those will actually cannibalize them. And kind of to solve that problem, what you can do is if it has babies and you find another female that doesn't have that many babies, you can remove the newborns and move them in with another mom to raise those babies. Sometimes you can actually switch them around like that. So sometimes it can be kind of tricky, you know, trying to figure out the rotation of a lot of your mice through, you know, the, the different ages that they go through. So that is pretty much my mice and some of the things that I wish I knew at the beginning. It can be a little bit more complicated than, than rats. So for example, rats, what you can do is you can have the, the male, you can have a whole tub full of males, you know, from the, the young pups all the way up to adults and they never fight at all unless you start mixing and matching with, so if you actually took a, a male rat and you put it with a female with babies, you might run into some aggression problems. But usually the, the male rats never really fight like you would actually see with the mice. And let me tell you, the mice, <laughs> you have to be careful. You have to be careful you don't have too many males in with the mice. So what I like to do, I like to put a little bit of food in the bottom. You notice I just kind of clean these. I clean these like every few days and I put a little food in the bottom so it's a little bit easier. But most of the food Food is in the back as far as uh, most of the food, it's in, it's in a hopper and they eat it from underneath. And the other thing I like to do is I like to take these little water bottles and I put them in here for the hoppers. It gets a little bit easier for them to drink out of these water bottles than it is to drink out of those little nozzles, especially for the really small mice in there. So that is my tips and tricks for, for breeding mice. A lot of things to keep in mind if you're actually getting into breeding mice. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.